Hello there programmers and welcome to another episode of our Flask tutorial series. I'm your instructor Chris Franklin. All right we're going to kind of continue the lesson from the last episode on HTML templating um, only this time we're going to talk about um, using the extensions of the template so being able to inherit from one template into a bunch of others that way we can start to create uh, basically shells uh, of our application and then have each page render specific content within a given shell where this is really useful is let's say you're building a blog and you have uh, several different pieces of content that you like to publish on you might have uh, videos or um, web comics or uh, actual article posts on your site and you want all of them to have a slightly different layout well you can create a template for each of those layouts and using flask you can actually inherit that template on each of your sub pages so that they get some of the shared components so you might have a top level template that contains your nav bar that goes across the top and then a sidebar template that gets it, that extends the nav bar template and then has content to the left of it or you know there's a bunch of different ways that you can use this kind of inheritance so what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into actually writing this and so we'll do a pip install uh, inside of a new virtual environment we're going to just install flask okay and once this is done we'll go ahead and create a new Python file and we'll call this main.py right? now this is going to be pretty straightforward you've seen this in all of the other temp uh, all of the other tutorials here in the flask series so uh, this should not be a surprise we're just going to import flask and the render template and then we're going to set up our flask application and then uh, we're going to set up two routes okay um, and we're going to set up a root that we're going to call home. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to render our templates. And we'll do index.html as the home. And then we'll do a second route. And the second route, let's just call it uh, user. Okay. So we'll do def user. Uh, we're not going to worry about passing in variables or any additional content into the pages. All we really care about in this tutorial is how to show uh, templating uh, and how to actually d inherit different templates. So we're going to skip passing anything in here. And we'll just do user.html. Okay. Of course, we have to actually launch the application and we're going to say app.run I saw a really cool trick um, where you can actually say debug equals true um, which is kind of a neat way of keeping the application running and it will scan for changes in your templates and just update them for you automatically. Um, so you can turn this on if you're if you're actually writing code. Otherwise, leave it out. But for today's lesson, we're going to show how to use it. Then in here, we're going to create a new directory and we're going to call this templates. OK, so this is where all of our HTML is going to live. All right, from here. Uh, we're going to have to create three HTML files. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, the base that everything is going to inherit from. All right, so I'm going to create an HTML file and I am going to call that base. All right, and I'm, I used uh, PyCharm to automatically generate the HTML shell here, all the boilerplate. And so we're going to take this title that it highlights automatically, and we're going to replace this with uh, Jenja. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to use block. So block is a, is a special feature of the Jenja templating. What this allows us to do 
is uh, pass in blocks of content from something that inherits this base template. Okay, so we're going to set up a block and we're going to call this block title. Okay, now it's important. Yep, yeah, it's important to make sure that you don't get any weird spacing in here. You need to make sure there's a space between the percent sign and the content inside, and then no space between it and the curly brace. Otherwise, you'll end up with really strange looking errors. Uh, and so then we just create the end block and percent. There we go. So this is uh, a block that we're putting inside of the title here. Okay. And then uh, inside the body, uh, we're going to put um, another one of these. Uh, so I'm going to just copy this here from the title. I'm going to paste it down here. And then instead of calling it title, I'm going to call this, um, let's say body. Okay. So we have title and we have body. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and don't do the automatically generated HTML file because this is going to work very differently. What we're going to do is we're going to put index.html. Now we're going to create the files that we're actually loading inside of our render templates functions. Okay. So if I do index.html, what I want to do for this is uh, extend the template, uh, the base template. Okay. So that's as simple as saying extends and then base.html. Okay. And that's all it takes to actually have index be the base. Now we have um, these blocks in here. Now to actually access these blocks, all we need to do is recreate them in our extension. So if we say block title, oh, if I spell it right, block title, and then inside of here, I put the actual title. So I can say this is our homepage and then end block. Okay. And close off that template tag. So that's it. That's all we have to do to actually replace this content here with whatever is extending it. Okay. So we're extending base.html and then we're accessing the title block and passing in the content that's inside here. So let's do the same thing uh, for um, the body. Okay. Now this we're going to do slightly differently because what I can do here is I can say I don't have to pass in just a string. I can pass in literally any of the valid Jinja HTML into the middle here. So if I want to pass in variables, if I want to pass in a raw HTML, if I want to pass in raw strings, I can do all of that in here. What I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say um, h1 and I'm going to say this is the home page. Okay. And that's, and that's what I'm going to put in here. I'm just going to create a body. All right, that's all we need for the index page. Let's go ahead and uh, create a new file. Actually, yeah, let's copy everything inside of index.html because we're going to use the same block here, the same structure to create our next file, which is going to be uh, user.html. Okay, and I'm going to paste everything I just copied from index.html. And then I'm going to change this and I'm going to say this is the user page and this is the user page. OK, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what everything looks like if we run this. OK, so I'm going to go back to the main. I'm going to click the little green arrow here to say let's run it. I'm going to copy this. All right. And I'm going to paste it into my browser in the background here. And I'm going to say let's go. So this is the home page. You can see it here. We're running. This is the home page. If I now say user, I can say this is the user page. We have the title. We have all the content that we just put in there. Everything looks good there. Okay. I can hear what you're saying. Great. Wonderful. But why? Why would we ever want to do this? Okay. Here's where the benefit comes. Let's go back to the code here and let's go into the base.html. So some of the things that I can do here that are fantastic, that make this so powerful is I can add uh, CSS styles so I can bring in something. Uh, let's say you want to bring in 
uh, Bulma or you want to bring in Bootstrap or Material UI, any of those uh, pre-made CSS frameworks, you can bring that here at the base and that will bring those styles in for every page that loads within your application. Okay. The other thing we can do is we can add wrapper content. So let's say we want to create, um, we're, oops, type that wrong, H1, and then in here, this is where our nav bar goes. Okay, so we have a top level navigation bar, uh, and I'm using an H1 here, but you can, you can really do anything you want to do in here. You don't have to use H1. Um, and then you can put like an, a horizontal rule in or, or whatever you want to do. So we can do this here. We save this on in the main base template. And then when we go back to the page here, you can see this is where our nav bar goes. And here's our horizontal rule. And the same thing applies for the base. This is our nav bar and this is the home page. You can see we can now start to bring in global styles and pieces of components that are shared across multiple pages and we can start to layer these templates on top of each other. We can also create nested direct directories inside of templates and so base can be the, the base level and you can have your home page in here and then you can have a slash users directory that has all your user based templates and then you can have a, a slash blog directory that has all your your blog templates in it. You can start to layer these on top of each other and create really complex uh, web designs using uh, Flask and the Jenja templating system. So this is super powerful and hopefully uh, this helps you in building your own applications. So that's it. That's all I have for today, but I really look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. Have a great day.